<coughs> Dirty, let me know when you're rolling, sir. Well, enough. <coughs> Quick with Coach, we'll take questions for Brock. Please raise your hands. Yeah, yeah appreciate everybody being here today. Let's we'll start with Brock. Questions for Brock, please raise your hand. Okay. Appreciate it. Chip. Okay. Brock, how's the uh, how's the mindset of the team? How's uh, how's everything going? Mindset of the team is good right now. We know that you're not going to go undefeated in college basketball season, and we're learning from the process. Uh, Brian. Brock, after watching the film, what, especially the last two games, how would you grade the aggressiveness? Uh, it's something that that we need to work on. Aggressiveness is a big part of our team, and we're the most aggressive team in win games. So how does that manifest itself? Practice, doing it every day, the way you practice, the way you're going to play. The coach has done a good job of making us aggressive in practice, and it will carry over. Nick Goodbrun. Hey, Brock, obviously you're a guy that prides himself on playing aggressive, and you know, after the game saying, you know, Oklahoma State was the more aggressive team. You know, what does that mean to hear that? And why does it seem like the aggression maybe kept in close for you guys, where sometimes you're, you're really in it, and other times it's, it's maybe a little lower than it should be? It's just working, working on putting the team together and finding the level of aggressiveness we need, and it's just a process that we're working on finding. Bob in the back. Brock, those the first half of both games this week, I don't think you shot a free throw. What does that kind of tell you about the way y'all are coming out? Is there is there something there, or is that just? Uh, our lack of free throws is another sign of our aggressiveness. Uh, we need to get into the paint and make the refs call fouls. Just aggressiveness is throughout our entire game right now. John, um, you know, what about the excitement of playing Oklahoma, you know, rivalry, you know, just, you know, you know, how excited are you to, to see them and, and have a chance to beat them? This rivalry is one of the biggest in college sports, and it's always a, a lot of fun to play the Oklahoma students. They have a great program, great school, and a great new coach. John, in front. You mentioned learning, learning from the process a couple of times. What are you learning from the process so far? That we need to be more aggressive. <laughs> that, that, that's all you learn from. I mean, that, that, that's the main thing. Aggressiveness, when we're the most aggressive team, we play well and we win. So finding that, that balance is what we need to learn from. Nick in front. Yeah, Marcus has uh, had his first two games in Big 12 play, right? You know, 20 points, 19 points. Looked like he kind of found his rhythm a little bit. You know, what do you think was giving him issues in the last game to finish, you know, one of six shooting? We weren't aggressive. We didn't get, to, we didn't, I mean, it's a, there's a common theme here. We didn't get to the paint. We didn't assert our will on the game. Jim and Carla. I was just going to define what you're talking about being more aggressive. It's got to go beyond just dribbling, you know, trying to drive to the basketball. What, in the totality, what do you mean by being more aggressive? In the totality of it, it means getting fouled, making them play bad, making steals, getting rebounds. Being physical, knocking people down on rebounds, just asserting our will on the game, playing at our own pace, getting good team shots, having a good culture within the team. It's all aggressive and that will go to winning. So why do you think it's been lacking? We just have to work on it. I don't have a straight answer for that. It's just something that we need to work on. Brian, one last one in the front. Uh, Brock, can you can you get the new Texas coach to do what the old Texas coach did? Go out and face the students and yell out, oh, you sucks. <laughs> would that ever happen? Would he, would, he, would, he do, would he do that on video? I'm not going to speak to Coach <laughs> <laughs> He will do what he does best. <laughs> Brock, thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Okay. Hey, thanks, Brock. <clears throat> Questions for Coach, please. <clears throat> it's like one of those drinking games. <laughs> Tell you who the word aggressive is. <laughs> right. So along those lines, does that mean that people have been slamming the back over the last 48 hours, I guess, maybe? No, I understand. Uh, you know, I kind of set the stage by saying that the other day. You guys were running with it, but you got no problem. Like, you know, let's see, if you think about our first Big 12 game, I would think that we were the more aggressive team against West Virginia. Uh, I don't remember the ins and outs of that game. But I remember being the most aggressive team, no doubt about it, right? <clears throat> Let's think about the Kansas State game the other day. You know, I, I would say that uh, we were the more aggressive team in the second half. Um, Gonzaga, I would say we were the more aggressive team in the second half. Seton Hall, I was, I was an 
heavyweight battle, but one for 14 from three point line didn't help us in that one. Um, so the point is uh, yeah, that's basketball. Uh, victory's going to favor the more aggressive team, always has, always will. What happens when you get two teams that are going at it? Well, you get a great, a great college game. And in those games, victory's going to favor the team, the fewest mistakes. And uh, man, it's, it's a tough as a player to be aggressive, to not make mistakes. Yeah, it's tough, and that's what a pro is. Um, and in the Big 12, you got to have some pros to win. So yeah, it's that fine line to be aggressive, uh, not making a lot of mistakes. That's what these games are. This is game four for us in this 18-round battle uh, with a great Tennessee opportunity game right there in the middle, I think. So we just got to continue getting better. I think these numbers may not be dead on, but I think as of yesterday, they're close to this. I think you're the third slowest tempo in the country, but your offensive and defensive efficiency are like 11th and 35th. Is there a balance in there somewhere, and is there a concern that if you need to speed up, it's going to be tougher to because you play this slow. Same if you're if you're a fast tempo team, can you slow down? If you're slow, can you speed up? Is there a concern in your mind on that? On that There's always concerns in coaching. You wake up every day wishing you had some more time or wishing you might have done something a little different. That's coaching. Um, and so concerns, yeah, heck yeah. I mean, finally, coaching doesn't have concerns. You know, he's already retired or uh, he's coaching in a league where he has the best players. And, um, they just win every game. So concerns, absolutely. And I think with uh, you know with tempo, it, it's, it's, it's whatever way you look at it, statistical things. You know, in some ways we have one of the most efficient defenses in the country. In other ways, we still aren't manufacturing enough offense out of it. And there's ways to look at it. Same thing with the offense. You know, I think shooting percentages have been on point. Uh, each game's a different kind of identity. Last game, guys. I mean, in the first half against Oklahoma State, we shoot 50 from the field. We shoot 40 from three. Uh, what's the problem? Too many turnovers. We're not getting shots on goal. Um, we actually got the same amount of shot attempts in our last opponent. Just turned the ball over too much. Got it. So it's just different ways to look at it. Um, you know, do I think we need to be more aggressive? Absolutely. I thought Brock did a great job today <laughs> explaining that to you guys. Um, you know, we, we, we need to push the ball. We need to get uh, shots in the open court. We need to manufacture second chance opportunities. You know, last game again, uh, with seven offensive rebounds, that's not enough on a night too where the shots aren't going down uh, like normal. So just a lot of things go with it. But I, I think it's uh, safe to say it's no secret we want to play more aggressive on offense, no doubt about it. Keenan in the back, please. Hey, Coach, um, do you have a specific uh, number of free throws that you're trying to get to per game, or does it just kind of depend on how the game is being played? Yeah, I think we talked about this one the other day too. Uh, you know, one thing we've always tried to do is make more free throws than the other team shoots. Um, normally, if you can get that done, you, uh, you you're getting things done in terms of like the balance on offense. Each team's different, though. Like, you know, Courtney Ramey's shooting open shots, and Jones is shooting open shots, and you know you have some halves. You know, I watched Baylor the other day, and they had a game where they didn't get the free throw line much, but they're playing the game the right way. So, um, you know, a lot of it just comes down to to paint touch offense is another way to really look at it. You know, if you get into the paint. And maybe not get to the free throw line, but you got that inside out game going. That that's good offense. Um, but yeah, we've got to figure out a way to get to the free throw line. No doubt about it. We got to get fouled without the ball too. You know, the cutting, the moving. Uh, it's just got to get better. The guys are working extremely hard on it, and um, you know we're optimistic that we'll uh, we'll be the team we all want to be sooner than later. Chip in front. Because you got uh, you got a bunch of different guys who can lead you in scoring game to game. In the half court, Trey is probably one of your best offensive options. He wasn't on the floor. Can you just talk about, you know, when they're doubling on Marcus and Trey is on the court, where the offense needs to come from? Yeah, it's been a challenge. Uh, guys, we're a no-excuse culture. Um, in, in period, we always will be, we always have been. Uh, but you ask the question and I'll answer it. Um, you know, we, we haven't been full speed. I, the first Big 12 game we played without Febris, a uh, guy that does a lot for us, maybe more than the outside eye understands. Um, the second game, I think we're out without Jones, uh, basically a starter. You know, I've said before, we have six or seven starters on this team. Uh, the last game, you know, against the team that really has four bigs, Mike and those guys do, it's the identity of their team. You know, we're without one of our best players, Trey. So there's been some adversity, but 
It's no different than anybody else. It's not an excuse, but I'll answer the question. You know, it's challenging playing the game without your best players. I thought Coach Huggins said it best here around one. You know, he, and he kind of went on with it. You know, you know, in his mind, thinking Taz might be the best player in the Big 12, and I, you know, I have no problem with that statement. And uh, to play without Taz was a, was a, was a stretch for them. Uh, to play without Trey is a stretch for us. Uh, but nobody cares about excuses, nor do I. Uh, but yeah, it's been a challenge not having our full lineup. Jonathan. Coach, you, you said that you're close to getting to be the team you want to be. How close are you to getting to that team? It's a process. Uh, it's no different than anyone else. You know, we're, we're, this is game four in the Big 12 season. This is the half point in the season. If I'm not mistaken, you know, you get the 31 games. And you get the one guarantee in the Big 12 tournament. So that's 32. 32 divided by two is what, Elton John? 16. Brian? Ish. 32 divided by two. Come on, B. You got this. 16. What's my Texas education? We didn't say. Like 32 223 divided by two. We said that's a pretty even. So it's uh, 16, right, Elton John? Yes, sir. And is this the 16th game of the season? Correct. So this puts you halfway through the guaranteed amount of games you get. So our team's a work in progress, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, we see portions of games, and we see portions of practice where, man, if everything clicks. Um, I think, you know, first year and all that, it's part of it, but it's also part of everything, right? If we're sitting here coaching a team with everybody back, you still hit that point where you got to kind of peak at the right time. Um, and so, you know, along the way, you got to compete as you build your resume. So, how close are we? I don't, I don't know. I, I can tell you that we, we, we see it in practice and we see it in games and we feel it. We just have to consistently get there. You know, to have a defense that's hard to score against, that creates offense, to have an offense that has that balance where we can play through the post, we get the three point shot, we're scoring on the break, uh, to have that aggressiveness. To see that balance, we get four or five guys in double figures. To to see that balance defensively, we got guys making plays. Uh, to see that bench show up when you need it most, um, you know, I, I think we all kind of understand what we're looking for, which is a work in progress to get there. Bob, we're back. As of one thirty Monday, are you back to healthy, or are you still is Trey still out? You, what, what's your you know, timeline on him? Yeah, Trey is uh, still out. He's going through the protocols. So, um, it's just a lot that goes into this. It's not one of these deals where they tell you, hey, he's, he's going to play uh, next game. So um, I think he's still going through the, the protocol, I guess, is the is the accurate way to say it. Um, also, not trying to hide anything from you guys do. Our, our stance will always be, if he plays, he plays. If he's questionable, he's questionable. So with, with Trey, uh, I think he's going through the protocol. Jeff, all right. Here's the offensive rebound. Is there a is there a plus minus you want to be at during the game? Is there a number you feel like you need to hit? Is there a performance or is it just kind of one of those high test deals that you can figure out what you bring out there? Yeah, those are things you look at. You know, you, you tell the guy, say, let's go down there and let's make half our shots. And then uh, on the half that we don't make, you know, let's go try to get half of those. If you've got a dominating offensive rebounding team or some years, let's try to get a third of those. Uh, but you got to get a certain percentage of the misses. And from time to time, it's a 50-50 ball with a college stat sheet won't show you an offensive rebound. Can we tip it out? We call it a pender's tip. Can we tip the ball out and go get it? It's like it becomes a 50-50 ball. But to me, in an NBA mindset, it's an offensive rebound. Um, but yeah, there's a certain amount. And it's, it's from t team to team. Like, you're playing against a team that their identity is their fast break. Maybe we send an extra guy back and maybe transition defense. And eliminating easy baskets is more important to the game plan on that night than offensive rebounding. Uh, and then sometimes you're just really, really good, and you impose your will on anybody. It doesn't matter who we put. Um, you know, we got, we got James Thomas was that his name. And, you know, we're gonna let you know James go go get five, six offensive rebounds no matter who he's playing. Um, so and to me, it's a fine line between your commitment to get back on defense and your commitment to crash the boards. And then in different times of the game, uh, you know, we're down eight or six minutes left in the game. You know, you got to throw punches. So the punch there might be to send more rebounders. Uh, when you throw punches, you leave yourself open to get punched. 
that might be the leak out break, but you see that doesn't happen a lot. What just happened? We were sending an extra guy to the glass. Brian, uh, what did I say? It seems like to me, Timmy had a good week. Devin also had some really good plays Saturday. What are some of the things uh, the last week that you really liked? Yeah, positives. Uh, you know, last week they all bleed together, but uh, the Kansas State game was a it's a game you'll remember. You know, travel on the day of the game. Uh, you're playing against what appears to be an undermanned team, but those teams always rally. And how many times do you see it in sports, right? The backup quarterback comes in, they win the game. The, the, the best receiver's out, but then here comes another guy. You see it a lot. You know, uh, guy goes from the practice squad, and two months later he's a franchise quarterback. Uh, and that's, you know, everybody on a Big 12 roster can play. You know, you got 13 scholarship players, so maybe 11, 12, 13 haven't been playing. They're really good players. They're running their own race. So I think the Kansas State game, our guys played really well, especially in the second half. And I, you know, so I, I think some good Timmy with the offensive rebounds. Uh, Devin, uh, I agree, Brian, impact in the game. I think the other night, you know, at, at Oklahoma State, I thought Devin's two baskets, Brock's corner three, uh, you know, we're continuing to develop the bench. That's a process. I think if we can get those guys playing as well as they can play, it'll just make our team better. But there's always positives, even when the scoreboard doesn't say it, even when the mood of the program, I mean, there's always positives. I think that's what championship teams do. You know, you can get better after victories, not just defeats. Uh, and you can continue to build when things don't go your way. It's, it's, it's a long season. It's a fight. You can't get too high or too low. Nick and Chris, uh, Dylan had uh, 10 shots the other day. Uh, it looked like he's kind of hunting for a shot more after we got there. Um, is he starting to kind of get a feel for you know when he needs to take shots and kind of when he needs to draw people in and kick it out a little bit more. Yeah, I think so. Uh, another unique thing with our season, right? It's not an excuse, but it's the reality. One of our best players doesn't have an off season. He doesn't practice in the fall. He doesn't get the benefit of the non-conference games. Uh, we put him out there on a limited minute basis. And so now he's he's kind of in the fire. And then with Trey being out right now, I mean, we're asking a lot of Dylan. But, I thought the 10 shots were good to see. Um, he's not a 3 for 10 guy, you know, he's, he's a 6 for 10 guy. Uh, that's just basketball. Um, you know, I thought uh, his two plays around the basket need to be flush dunks. Give Oklahoma State credit for those, those two really good shot blocks and big moments. So if he dunks those balls, it's probably a different, it's a different outcome if he dunks those two balls. So, uh, but yeah, I like Dylan. If he's, what he's trying to do is very difficult to do. When you don't have an off season and you don't have practice, and all of a sudden you're playing, uh, I've had some special players do this before, and uh, it takes a lot. It takes a smart guy to be able to literally join a team halfway through the battle and play at his best. You know that's what we need Dylan to do. We really don't have a backup plan. Doctor, two last ones, Bob and back. What's, what's the biggest challenge defensively, or a couple of the challenges defensively facing this Oklahoma team? Guys? Yeah, so this is a Porter Moser team. <coughs> Porter's teams are always really, really tough. And uh, I think when you think of toughness, hopefully you think of our teams. You, hopefully you think of, uh, you know, uh, teams that you think of Baylor's defense right now and uh, Texas Tech's defense. You think of these things. Coach Huggins' aggressiveness. Everybody has an identity. Porter's teams always start with toughness. And it's a real toughness, too. It's not a, it's not a fake toughness. They're tough. They're disciplined. Uh, they're hard to score against. Um, in our offense, they have a toughness, too. They don't take bad shots. I think what the world saw recently with Illinois, Chicago, is that right? Uh, we've known for a long time. You know, I followed him at Little Rock, uh, one coach in between us, and have watched his teams all along the way. And uh, supporters' teams have a toughness about them, it's real. Um, I think this Oklahoma team is, is really good. Their returning players have gotten better, um, and then they did a great job recruiting. Uh, the the Groves, Groves brothers uh, are special players. Uh, uh, big guy, is a, he's an all-conference player, he's an NBA player in my opinion. Um, so they've got an identity, they've got really good players. Uh, it, it'll be a great challenge for our team. John in front. Well, I was going to pass it down on you, but <laughs> Coach, um, players and coaches always that are here always say when Texas faces a team, they're going to get, they're, they know they're giving that team's best shot. How do you get your team to think that way about the other team? How do we get our team to understand that we're going to get their best shot? No, that you're going to give them your best shot. Because y'all always talk about we're going to get, you know, we're going to get a team's best shot. How, how do you get your team to say, we're giving this, this team our best? Yeah, if you're, if you're not willing to give your best shot, then you shouldn't be in Texas. Uh, we're recruiting the wrong guys or coaching the wrong guys, if that's, that's true. Right? Um, 
if I understand the question, uh, you know, now you start talking about motivating players and stuff like that. And if that's the case here, then we got the wrong guy. So, uh, you know, I think our guys understand. We, we came together to compete for the whole thing. Um, we didn't come together to make a tournament. We came together to win the tournament. We understand how tough that is. Um, we got a confidence about us, but we have zero arrogance about us. So we, we, we understand. I think you guys understand that. You know, I, you know, I was very aware that, that you know that Incarnate Word could have come in here and beat us. It happens in college basketball, and I'm very aware of what Oklahoma is going to try to instill on us tomorrow. Um, I think with our players, uh, to answer your question specifically, we, we, we try to tell the guys the truth. We we try to explain to the guys that every night you're going to get somebody's best shot, and we have to play our best each night. Um, we know that anybody can beat us on any given night, no matter where we play. This is college basketball. Um, you know, I think going into that first Big 12 game, we we had explained to the guys uh, that uh, Ole Miss had lost the game right after Christmas. Alabama had lost the game, I think, right after Christmas. Like, we show the guys examples. We show the guys what happens in the world of sports, not just basketball. We explain to the guys that we have to play our best game. Last one, shifters. Chris, who's the guy you, when you bring him in off the bench, you feel like, okay, he can, he can kind of get us going, whether it's energy or offense, or I mean, Christian Bishop, when the guy's shooting 60% from the field, you got Jace. What, what's going through your mind when you, you know, see the team maybe get off the sludge start? Who do you need to go get? So. Yeah, I think every player has a role. Every player has an identity. There's some things that you've got to get out of each guy uh, to play your best. Kind of piggyback on the last question, to play your best and, and to win these battles. Um, I think one thing that I've always believed in is I think every player needs to be an energy guy. Every player needs to be a tough guy. Like I don't, I told the guys this morning, like it's not just Brock's job to come in and make these physical plays. It's your job too, Marcus. And it's not just, you know, Avery's job to come in and play defense. It's your job too, Ravy. And I think when you start getting players to understand that everybody has some non-negotiables, you, you better represent Texas, you better play hard, you better compete, you can't take plays off. I think when everybody understands those things, now when you start getting into roles, no doubt about it, we need Jason Peppers to make open shots. Uh, we need CB to get his hands on loose balls. We need Brock to impose his physicalness in a game. Um, but I think the big thing with that is hopefully that Every player we put in the game can go in there and impact the game and change the game. Um, and I think that's where we are with a lot of our veteran players too, trying to get them to see themselves, you know, as, as uh, different kinds of guys. And ultimately, that's how a lot of these guys get to to the NBA, right? Like, uh, most players don't go to the NBA as a first round franchise pick. They go to the NBA thinking, you know, these are things we can do. It you see it all the time. Um, and I we talked to the guys this week about Royal Live. And the things he did, you know, not only in Texas, but also what he did to become a, you know, a second, third, fourth contract pro. Um, so we hopefully everybody we put in the game can impact the game with aggressiveness and with, with, with heart and with Texas fight and these things. And I think that's something we are working on right now. You know, we need our best players to view themselves as our toughest guys too, not just, you know, Avery Benson. If that makes sense. Thanks all. Appreciate your time. Appreciate it. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.